It's time for another aquascape and today I'm gonna rescape this tank. I did this aquascape a while back. I'm not enjoying it as much anymore so I think it's better to just do a rescape of it. So I have a lot of stuff in here that I can actually reuse for this scape. Those rocks here for example, those would be nice to reuse. And also a lot of the plants in here can definitely be reused in this scape. I spared you from having to watch the whole cleaning process of this tank and to be honest nobody wants to see that anyway. And this is actually about creating an aquascape not tearing it down and cleaning the tank. Now this is as clean as it gets. This is an old used tank so it has its flaws but once it gets filled with water we won't be able to see those small flaws anyway. I did manage to save most of the substrate and to be honest substrates are quite expensive so if I'm able to reuse the substrate I'm using I try to do it. Now the tank itself, it's about 35 liters. So now I think it's time to do the fun part and start creating an aquascape. And for a start, I think we should get a bit of nutrient layer in and we'll go from there. So what I'm using for the nutrient layer here is the Tropica substrate. And I'm actually blending this with the Denali Nutribasis 6-in-1. And I'm gonna use this as a layer beneath the substrate and that will be like a dirt layer that will provide the plants with enough nutrients to thrive. Now the reason why I'm mixing these two are basically that I just had one of each. Now I think this is quite enough for this small tank. It's not super deep, but I'm also not gonna have uh, too thick of a substrate level in here. So I think this should be enough. Now it's time to cap the nutrient layer in and I'm using JBL Manado. And this is a natural substrate and uh, it's Pretty porous, so this will provide the whole bottom with a good water flow through it. And this will actually benefit all the beneficial bacteria. It can also store and release nutrients whenever needed. So all the substrate is now in the tank here. And if we look at it from the side, there's more substrate towards the bottom. And what this does is that it's creating a feeling of depth when we look into the tank from the front. The light I'm using for this tank is a Nycru Classic LED Generation 2 LED RAM. This is a budget light, I bought this off Amazon, but I'm really pleased with it. It's a pretty good LED RAM to be honest. So what I'll do, I'll take these uh, metal bars off because I want to get this light uh, a little bit further up. I did notice on the last scape that the plants in the front and the plants uh, in the bottom of the tank were actually growing forwards so i think the light was a little bit too close and that forced the plants to grow a little bit weird so i want to get it up a little bit like this so i bought these stands off of amazon and uh, it's not a perfect fit but it will work and now i can get my lead ramp a little bit higher from the surface so this will actually spread the light a little bit better and hopefully all the plants will grow more upwards now Time to begin with some hardscaping. I've been thinking a little bit on how I want to have the hardscape. I'm going to do something like this. I want one root in here and I'm also going to use a couple of the rocks that I mentioned earlier. And I think I'm just going to have one center island here. And I'll just start placing them in and see somehow how I could get this to look good here. I'm going to have to tweak it a little bit and see what I think looks good. I do know that I want this little Anubias here. This is attached to rock. I want this in the foreground here. So I'm gonna try to shove this little rock in somehow here. Now on this rock here, these are just Java ferns. Same on this root here. I do have one more uh, lava rock with some Java ferns attached to it. I think I'm gonna have this inside as well, maybe somewhere here. And this actually looks pretty good like just to place it like this and this will actually close the gap between the rock and uh, the root like this. I do really like the look of this so I think I think I'm actually happy with this. It's very simple but I think it looks really good. What I'll do now is I'm gonna attach some more plants to this root because it's pretty naked on the right side here. I do have a couple of pogostemons that I'm gonna place at the base here and uh, I think I'm gonna put a couple 
onto the root as well. Okay, so what I'll do now is I'm gonna take this Java fern. I have an extra piece of Java fern here and uh, I'm gonna glue this onto the root like this. And for this I'm using Cyanoacrylate super glue. And this is completely safe for both plants and fish. And I'll just glue it into place like this. I'm also going to add a little bit more moss onto the rock here. feels a little bit like something is missing in the middle here so I'll add in just two small java fern plantlets here and I think this makes all the difference in that area so all of this here makes a really good centerpiece of the tank and uh, I have a lot of space behind here where I can put some stem plants and other stuff I like. I need something a little bit more low towards the sides, I suppose. And uh, not sure what to go for in the foreground yet, but we'll get to that. And since there's no more to glue to the hardscape here, I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the tank with water. Now you can see how, how porous this uh, substrate is. Uh, the plants want to float up, so I really have to uh, bury those roots pretty deep into the substrate here. All the Pocus demons are in, so now would be a good time to install the filter. And for this tank, I'm using a sponge filter that is driven by air. It is the cheapest option I have in here. Now the water is a little bit cloudy, but I'll leave this overnight and this should hopefully clear up until tomorrow and we can continue with the rest of the plants. 24 hours have passed now and this is as clear as it gets, so it's time to get the rest of the plants in. I have one unknown crypt that I think would fit exceptionally good here behind the rock here. I'm also going to put in a couple of Echinodorus latifolius grass plants. I will put a little bit of Hydroctyle tripartita here and there. This plant grows like kind of a carpet and it's relatively nice to have it creeping on the hardscape. I do have a couple of mystery plants here. I have absolutely no idea what this is. All I know is that I definitely want to plant them in this tank. And uh, time will have to tell what this actually is. A couple of Ludwigia palustris super red would do really nicely in front of my filter here. And I really like this plant and the Ludwigia doesn't grow like crazy. This is a plant I think is really easy to maintain. I'm also going to plant a couple of Otala rotundifolia in the background here. So this will hopefully create a little bit of a transition between the green grass and those pink reddish mystery plants. Pocostamon erectus is probably my favorite green stem plant. So I'm gonna plant just a couple of them on the right side here. And the last thing I'm gonna do in the background here is to fill in some of the gaps with some more Ludwigia.
I do love having carpets in my aquascapes. I did want to add some Monte Carlo to this scape, but I couldn't get that right now. But I do have some hair grass. So I'm gonna add in the hair grass and I can just add in the Monte Carlo between all the hair grass at a later date. To be honest, I didn't think I would get this good coverage with the amount of hair grass that I had, but this is definitely enough, even without the Monte Carlo, to create a really nice carpet. And now I'm gonna do my finishing touch and I'm gonna add in the CO2 system. A couple of floating plants in the beginning will help picking up excess nutrients. So I let the tank be up and running for a couple of days without inhibitants. I have already put in some Ramson snails as a cleaning crew. And everything looks good, so it's time to put in the first couple of fish in the tank. I'm adding in five ember tetras and one sparkling gourami. I don't want to add in too much fish in the beginning before all the beneficial bacteria start colonizing this tank. So I think this is a good amount of fish in the beginning. In a couple of weeks, I'm gonna add in a couple of more ember tetras. And I think I'm also gonna get a couple of shrimps for this tank. The tank will look so much better in a couple of weeks. And I also want to give you an update when I buy new fish for the tank. I leave a list on all the plants in here in the description. Same for this lead ramp and those extenders I have here. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do that if you don't want to miss upcoming videos. And I'll see you next time.